capital is an introductory topic, a very important one in SFM. SFM is Strategic Financial Management, one of the papers in professional level of ICANN exams. ICANN means the City of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, for people that don't know. So, what is cost of capital? Cost of capital is defined as <laughs> this is how I let me see this small abbreviation is the minimum required rate of return. Minimum required rate of return. So what does this mean? Cost that you use to raise capital. So if you're raising one million and you spend about hundred thousand to raise it, that hundred thousand is the minimum rate of return you should get. Do you understand? That hundred thousand is ten percent. Okay? And this ten percent is the cost of capital. So this cost of capital should be the minimum required rate of return. You can make more than that. Do you understand? So in SFM, there's something I've noticed that you see your questions from the point of view of an investor or a borrower. So in cost of capital, most of the questions, you have to look at the requirement from the point of view of the investor. Okay? If I'm investing in your business, what is the minimum required rate of return? The minimum required rate of return will be the cost that was used to raise that capital. Now what is capital? You can't be defining what capital is in this class, but you know that capital can be in form of equity, right? It could be in form of debt, it could be in form of preference shares, and it could also be a combination of equity and debt, okay? So it means that you can determine the cost of equity, which is a type of capital. You can determine the cost of debt, and you can determine the cost of a combined capital. So a company might be financed by only equity. You can determine the cost of equity, which is the minimum required rate of return on equity. You can finance by only debt, you can determine the cost of debt, and you can finance by both of them, okay? So you can determine the weighted average cost of capital. That's what it's called, work. Weighted average cost of capital. Now, let's start with cost of equity. How do you determine cost of equity? There are three major approaches in determining cost of equity. We have the dividend valuation, model, you have the capital asset pricing model, and we have the Modigliani and Miller approach. So these are three approaches to finding cost of equity. Now, when you want to find cost of debt, you have also the dividend valuation model, and you have the capital asset pricing model. Now, when you want to calculate work, it's just a particular formula that is used in calculating work. And that formula is saying, take the cost of equity, multiply it with the weight, the proportion of equity, and add it to the cost of debt. This cost of debt must be post-tax cost of debt. I'll explain what all those things mean, and weight with the weight of debt. So this weight means, this weight means equity proportion over the total capital you have in the company, right? Plus huh? the cost of debt. Which will be a particular, a particular percentage, right? Times debt proportion in the total capital. You know, maybe equity is 70 and debt is 30. So it will be 70 over 70 plus 30. So let's start from cost of equity. Cost of equity. I said the first approach is your dividend valuation model. The second approach is capital asset pricing model. And the third approach is your Modigliani and Miller. They are two men, they are the approach. Now, in your exam question, the information you are given is what you use to determine the formula to use. In dividend valuation model, what they are saying is that let us calculate the cost of equity by considering the amount of dividend that is paid or what is the status of their dividend payment at that current period? English is hard. So, cost of equity is determined by saying dividend over the market value per share. You know, maybe they are paying dividend of 3 naira per share. And then you have the market value of the share to be 10 naira per share. It means the cost of equity, the minimum required rate of return is 30%, right? 3 over 10 is 30 over 100, that's 30 percent. Always note that this market value that must always be X div, as in it must not be carrying the value of dividend. If they give it to you as 13, home div, it means it has dividend inside, okay? Now, there could be a scenario whereby they say that dividend that they are paying is growing at 5%. Hmm? 
So it's, this formula can change. It will now become cost of equity is equal to dividend considering the growth 1 plus G over market value. So you can tell that this dividend is growing at the rate of 5%. In some questions, the people will not tell you the growth rates. You see that have to determine the growth rates. They will tell you it is growing, you know, the last dividend was this amount, the current dividend is this amount. But they will tell you that the company paid dividend last year. It is growing, you know, but it's not much they retain. It means you will also have to go and determine this G, this growth. Now, there are two methods to determine growth. You can use the historical method, historical history, based on what they have been doing before. Or you can use the Gordon's method. It's very simple. Very simple. Now the historical method has a formula to get they're trying to get growth. It's telling you that growth is equal to square root of your new dividend, what the one you just paid, the latest dividend over the oldest dividend. They can give you dividend of like five years ago, but they would even give you for five years. The oldest you paid, okay? Then you put the number of years, the number of years of dividend you give you. When we are solving questions, you understand? Minus one. Okay? This is how to calculate the growth rate if you are using the historical method. How would you know if you are using the historical method? They won't tell you to use the historical method based on the information given. So, you can use the Gordon's approach to get your growth. That one is say just multiply the return on investment, okay, times the retention rate. So this one means return on investment, and this one means retention rates. Hmm? What's retention rates? You make probably earnings per share of five naira. You pay out three naira. It means you retain two naira. So it means you have retained two over five times hundred. That's how much you retain forty percent. Does that make sense? So that's how to get your growth. We are still on dividend approach. When you want to think of the formula, just always remember that cost of equity is equal to dividend over market value. Okay. Now, whether there is growth or not, you are not allowed to add your growth rate if you have growth. Now, if you don't have growth, that is, if you have to determine growth, that's why you use these two formulas. Now, let's go to the capital asset pricing model. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section. The capital asset pricing model is an approach that looks at the risk. It says don't value equity, don't value cost of equity based on dividend. Let's look at the risk attached. And the formula for that, I'll explain it. The formula for that is saying cost of equity equals risk free rate plus equity beta, that is the risk attached to this equity capital, mm -hmm. into market rate or market returns minus your risk free rate. See, the difference between your market returns, RM and RF, is your premium premium when we are solving examples you understand so this approach looks at the relationship between risk and return you know the higher the risk the higher the return so that is how you determine your cost of equity under the capital asset pricing model now the risk free rate will mostly be given in the question this is the is usually the minimum rate the government rate government return on treasury bills okay so let's move to the third approach before we start solving examples Modigliani and Miller, yeah. So these are two guys in 1958 or 1959, I can't remember, that came to say if you want to determine cost of equity, you can't just determine it without considering whether the company is geared or ungeared. Hmm? So their argument went through different phases, they made some funny assumptions, it was criticized, and all of those stories are not necessarily relevant. So you can read them in their textbooks. The summary of what they are saying is that the cost of equity of a geared company is not the same as the cost of equity of an ungeared company. So what are they saying? They are saying the cost of equity of a geared company must always be greater than the cost of equity of an ungeared company. Like I said earlier, they came with all sorts of assumptions, assume that there is no tax, assume that dividend will not grow. Is that possible? No. But SF is about funny assumptions. You all need to understand it. So, what they are saying is that if you want to determine cost of equity, ask yourself, is it a geared company or an ungeared company? Okay, I'm not saying what a geared company and an ungeared company is. So a geared company is a company that is financed by equity and debt. While an ungeared company is financed by just equity. So when they just tell you a company is geared, it means it has a debt element. There is debt element in it. If I own a company and I bring in one million as capital, the moment I 
borrowed 300,000, it becomes a dead company. The risk is higher because it's not just my money. I'm thinking about external funds. Therefore, the cost is higher. The cost of capital. Cost of capital, don't forget, is minimum required rate of return. The higher the risk, the higher the return. Do you understand? So what you are saying is that the cost of equity of a company that has debt elements would definitely be greater than the cost of equity of a company without debt elements. Now, it's telling us that this is how to move between the two. Or if you want to determine cost of equity of a debt company, it is equal to cost of equity of an debt company plus cost of equity of an debt company minus cost of debt hmm? times the value of debt over value of equity times 1 minus t. This is the formula. So if you are trying to determine cost of an Cost of a get company, this is the formula to use. If you are even trying to determine the cost of an get company, this is the formula to use. It's just that you make this one the subject of formula, or you input your variables, and this one somehow you find this way to the left hand side and you solve. So this is what M and M approach is saying. This is what factor asset pricing model approach is saying, and this is what dividend valuation model is saying. So let's solve questions and I'll film that one tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Share with people that you know that will find this helpful, and I'll see you. Question class. <laughs>